Politicians are busy crisscrossing our country, trying to convince us that they have the best vision for Canada. After all, we are going to the polls on September 20th. The polls at the end of week one started to shift, something of many of us wouldn't have necessarily predicted, since the shift doesn't favor the Liberals who called the election. And now after week two, things seem to have plateaued somewhat. And I'm not surprised. Many Canadians are enjoying their last days of summer before returning to work and returning to school. Later in the program, we will have our election panel where we will discuss the latest issues from the campaign trails. And for that, we will be joined by Elliot Hughes, senior advisor from Summa Strategies and former advisor to Liberal Finance and Defence Ministers, and Yanni Makris, consultant with the Daisy Group and former Conservative parliamentary staffer. But now, to tell us what's happening in the polls, we welcome Quito Maggie, president and CEO of Main Street Research. Quito, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having me, Tanya. So tell us, what's going on in the polls? Things have started to shift. Yeah, kind of crazy start to this election. Uh, you know, some people don't like it, but after the one we had in 2019, that was just kind of, it was a tie. It started as a tie, kept going. It was just boring election. Uh, I'm having a lot more fun with this one. Um, as you said, about 10 days ago, um, we started seeing a shift uh, away from the Liberals to the Conservatives. So for, it stayed pretty stable a couple days Big shifts in Atlantic, big shifts in Alberta, big shifts in Ontario. Um, a lot of noise, a lot of volatility. And then it kind of settled into this slow gain by the, by the Conservatives. Um, peaked about two days ago where we had uh, just under a 10-point lead, 9.4% lead for the Conservatives. Across the board? Uh, across the board wow. nationally with, with substantial leads in British Columbia, um, uh, very neck and neck in um, in Atlantic region, a uh, lead in Ontario, and of course across the prairies in, in, in Alberta, a very uh, substantial lead. And so overall, at that point, we had the, the the Conservatives finally on that day take the seat count lead, um, and then it settled in a little bit. It's, it's sort of stagnant now, sitting at about seven and a half points the lead. Okay. Uh, for the Conservatives over the Liberals. J that's just happened over the last two days. This week now, as we start getting, as you mentioned, we're st we start getting into September, uh, people's minds kind of turn more to back to school, back to work. Um, I, I expect that more shifts to happen as these people right. come right. home from uh, summer breaks and vacations. Well, see, that's and the way I see it. I see that parents will be packing their kids' lunches and then they're going to be getting settling back into their work routine and then people start Googling, okay, what are these... Politicians, what do they stand for? I'm just going to start reading my, my snail mail and reading the emails. But with respect to the, the I guess you could call it the conservative surge, I, I was quite surprised. Uh, you know, it was the Liberals who called the election, so obviously they would call it when things were more favorable for them. What do you think can be attributed to why the conservatives are surging? Is it that simply people don't have their mind in the game, those persons who would more poll liberal? What, would you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I guess I wasn't as surprised as most people. If you recall, just before the election, Main Street did a poll and asked people. It was it was released just the day before, but we were polling on the weekend before the election was called, and we asked people if they wanted an election. If they thought the specific wording was, "Do you think right now is a good time for an election?" And you know, sixty five percent of Canadians told us no, it wasn't not, and thirty five percent said yes. But weirdly. The people who told us yes were largely in Alberta, in the prairies, uh, young people under 35 who had been led by uh, the NDP right. uh, for most of the year. So it was the people who don't support the prime minister and the current government who, are, who were actually telling us they did want an election. So that, that pointed to something weird that might happen at the start. Um and then, you know, we've been asking other questions since around uh, around the leadership that, you know, we, we released for the first time yesterday. And that really pointed to sort of this is the why, because nothing's really happened. I've been asked right. all week, why, why, why? Finally, the, the, the data we released yesterday sort of pointed to that. OK, well, we have 30 seconds before we have to wrap up. Uh, what is the state right now? Is it going to be if the election were held today, we still have three weeks. But if it were held today, is it a conservative minority, majority, liberal, majority, minority? Who's holding the power here? Yeah, I could say it would be a conservative plurality of seats if, um, if an election were held today. About 37 
uh, to 30, uh, with the NDP sitting around 18 percent. Um, and that would translate to uh, conservatives having more seats than anybody else and with the first chance at forming government. Okay, so we'll have to keep an eye on this. But thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, thanks again.